sometimes the tiniest of things impress geeky minds. Just take a look at the tablet in front of the pilot here sitting in the H145. Oh, it's in or oh, it's out. It's in, it's out. It's in, it's out. If you thought that was uh, impressive, have a look at the hoist. Oh, ho, ho. I get really excited now. There we go. Now, very often in the flight simulator, you will want to be using, well, why waste all of those joystick buttons and all those throttle buttons you might have? I mean, they twist and they pivot and they do all kinds of stuff. But you can actually make really good use of them through bindings and you can bind in the H145 to specific actions like this. I love it. I love it. I have to say, um, although we do all the work to get this happening, I'm really even more amused at it by the end. Well, welcome, folks, to the Flying Doctor channel. Let's geek into it. So, yes, I had a request in the comment section for me to show those who are new to the sim how to bind your buttons, switches, dials on your throttle or your stick that you're using with Flight Simulator so that they can enable you to get better immersion because they are anchored to particular commands that you might want to issue, uh, actions you might want to take in the H145 uh, cockpit. Now, if you want to do this, the first thing you need to do is to go to View and Modify, and you'll find that this screen comes up. That I'm obviously in Hype Operation Center, and so you would go, I'll do that for you again, just so that you can see if you're following me. So I am on, crucially, I am on the helicopter, the H145. You can see I've got an update available. I'm looking forward to updating that live so people can see that happen, but that's a different story. Um, so go on to H. PG145. If you get a different screen like that and you can't see the options, uh, that's because obviously you're on the wrong little thumbnail. So go to the top here, go to Key Bindings, which is underneath Base Pack and Action Pack, click View and Modify, and this screen will come up. Now, the easiest way of explaining this is to say that they are a there are hundreds of commands in Microsoft Flight Simulator, and you don't need all of these preset commands to do specific things within H145. You don't need all of them. Some of them, they're redundant. Okay, so here we are. A really good example would be uh, Magneto 4 left. Well, there is no Magneto 4 left on the H145, but automatically with a with Microsoft Flight Simulator, there is an option to bind uh, to a key on uh, your your stick or your throttle and it will send the message to the simulator switch on magneto 4 left okay but because there is no magneto 4 left h145 can say ah well if we get the sim to recognize the command magneto 4 left it can represent for us collective beep release hold it doesn't really matter whether you know what collective beep release hold is all it is is that that is a an action that you may well want to uh, operate and there are lots of these actions here on the right hand side these are legitimate things actions that you would want to carry out in the H145 in the simulator you've got beep buttons here um, left right up and down on the collective and the cyclic and uh, yes they're not catered for ordinarily within Microsoft Flight Simulator but one that's really interesting that we're going to experiment on now is on opening and closing the tablet because when you see me open and close the tablet you see me just uh, move the mouse and click in between the tablet and the unit that holds the primary flight displays but actually um, preset within uh, the uh, H145 if we find a button on our throttle for example our throttle unit um, or if we find a can find a vacant keyboard key we can, instead of having to click with our mouse, we can uh, open the tablet automatically with much more kind of immersion. Okay, And the way we do that is that we tie our button to the command Magneto 3 both. And when we press our button and it sends a signal to Microsoft Flight Simulator Magneto 3 both, the H145 it does see it, but then it interprets that and says, ah, you want me to open and close the tablet. 
Okay, so that's how this is working. Now, I realize that some people have been journeying with the SIM4 and the H145 for years and don't need this, but for other folk, it might be really, really helpful. So we're just going to model how we do that. So the way we start this, we jump into the simulator, go to, you've got the menu page that open up straight away, go to your options here, and then click on controls options. Okay. Now you're going to see me make a few changes here, but that's because I've got my own particular setup. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to I'm going to be programming the uh, uh, throttle. Now this is something that uh, can easily be missed. If you just make sure that if you want to move through the devices that you have attached, so I've got keyboard, mouse, I've got some rudder pedals, I've got a Hotas stick, and I've also got a throttle here. Now my setting here for throttle is default, uh, but you can actually set up. Uh, different range of button programming for different aircraft. So if I click on the right here, it actually says uh, X56 hotel, uh, throttle profile. And if I give it two seconds, it will actually say VR because I'll let it it'll move if I if I put my cursor on that. There's a little hint with that is that when you do program as you're about to do and set out a new profile, uh, make sure it's got a short name. Otherwise, you won't be able to see it that easily. So there's my H145 profile. Uh, there's a throttle profile, there's a jet profile that's in there, there's a fixed wing, and uh, we, vary between, um, uh, f we vary between options here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to default, so I've just clicked it onto default, and then I'm going to go down to open preset manager down here, okay, and then I'm just going to duplicate, that's the easiest thing, click on duplicate, so you duplicate what was there before, and then I'm going to release this back down, and I'm going to actually call this X56 Hotas Heli EXA. Helix exam, we'll call it for example. Now, the reason I'm keeping it short is because um, a shorter name is much easier to read, as I kind of demonstrate earlier. So I click on that, and there you go. So I've got a new profile, but based on an old one, okay, based on the default one, which is, if you're coming to this fresh, is what you will may well have. Okay, let's just jump back here to the principles we were looking at um, before. So in the main sim here, we had this really interesting uh, thing. I thought this will improve my immersion. And if I go right to the middle here, you'll see that I can open and close the tablet and program a, a vacant switch in my throttle unit. If I program that to Magneto 3 both, when I'm in the sim and I click on that switch, the signal magneto throw both will go to the through to the H145, but the H145 will go, no, that means open or close the tablet. So pretty sort of straightforward here. And these options on the right hand side are the most common options that uh, you would use in the H145. And developers have nicely grouped them together with some commands that are already that are defunct in Microsoft Flight Simulator that we can use. So we'll just go back if I can actually find where uh, the uh, command is where are we all the way up here hinge open close so I'm looking for magneto 3 both aren't I so right here we go this is what we do so I'm going to go back into the simulator here I'm going to type in I can search by name or I can search by input um, so I'm going to type in magneto uh, I'm going to type in magneto 3 both M A G N E T O three. Okay, um, and I, I'm going to actually type in both. Okay, and it's come up there. Right. Now, for some reason, this has come up here again. Um, it's just reminded me of this current profile. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Um, I'm just going to go back there. There we are. So, Magneto three both. Um, if I program my button to this, uh, it will signal hinge open close. So um, I'm going to click on this. There we are. And, and it says I can select an input. Uh, or if I'm not sure about it, I can scan for the input. So what I would do is click on the start scanning, flick the three button, joystick button 18. Uh, and uh, there's some options here. You can do it on press, on release. Uh, but we'll go back and just get it to search it again. There we go. Joystick button 18. I just pressed it again. 
and I can validate this, okay, which means accept it. So I click on validate, there you go, and it's now saying that Magneto 3 both is linked to joystick button 18, of course Magneto 3 both, H145 will read that as open up the tablet. So we're just going to open up and just see whether that indeed works. Okay. So back we go. They're saying apply and save. Yes, I do want to apply and save. Uh, back we go. Uh, we'll go to the world map. And uh, it just happens that I'm at South End, which is here in the UK. And uh, I'll click on the runway. Uh, I'll set departure. And I'll click uh, fly. Okay. And I'll be with you in a sec. So here we are on the runway inside the uh, cockpit. And if I press that button that I've just programmed, you'll find the tablet opens. There we go. And press it again in the same direction and the tablet will close. Interesting uh, finding these. So it's actually a push of what is a flip switch and it's in one direction. It's a rocker switch. It looks like it's a rocker switch with a kind of, you know, about a centimetre of kind of, um, a kind of uh, switch. On it so it will go the other way but if I pull down nothing happens but if I click and just keep clicking it tablet will come on and come off which uh, may give you a little bit more immersion rather than just sort of sticking your your thing around here and doing that um, but it, it there we go it's just one example so yeah that's uh, oh I'm having real fun here so that's just one example of what is uh, available and of course if we go back to the main sim page you can see there's all kinds of interesting ones here you know you can uh, increase magneto 3 would be open uh, the cockpit door on the right decrease cockpit door on the left master brightest brightness and increase and decrease you can set this so some of these are really you know quite helpful so that's the first thing i'd say so that's um setting the most common commands that you may wish to set on the h145 However, it gets better because it may well be, if I scroll down to the bottom here, that you can you want to add some custom key bindings. Okay, and the principle is much the same. Let's just start firstly with finding a, a binding that we might want. So we click on add binding down the bottom here, and I get an option on the left here for the for the command in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And for what I want it to do um, uh, within the um, sim itself. So let's find a command or something that's available in the simulator that's uh, a little that, that isn't ordinary ordinarily dealt with. So I'm going to click on this, and I find a whole load of options here that I can scroll through. Okay, I found what will be really useful for me: um, hoist arm stow and hoist arm deploy. And another setting is hoist mode auto and hoist mode manual. But we'll start with stow and deploy because it's the easiest thing to illustrate the moment. Firstly, I just want to sort of show you why it's a little bit of a pain to do this in the cockpit using your mouse uh, button and uh, your pointer. Uh, and, then, and then you get an idea of how this can really add some functionality. So I'm going to go back to the sim here. And here we have, um, we're still in the same place. Um, uh, we've actually, I've actually loaded up a mission. Now, you might not be into missions, but this is just a really good, it can be anything that's a bit of a pain to do, or you're finding a bit awkward to do uh, when you are um, in uh, the sim itself. Now, if you go on missions, you want to use the tablet um, to see the maps. You can pull up the map here if you click on uh, DMAP and it will do that. Um, so you can play about with these as to what you um, want on there. Uh, but my main point would be um, that actually when it comes to sort of hoisting, uh, you want the hoist to come out. Uh, it's It can be a bit of a pain if you've forgotten to put it out in the first place because it manually needs to go out. What I mean by that is I'm just going to slip to this external view. You can see that if I just zoom in here nice and close, you can see this up here is the hoisting unit. Okay, and when you're on mission, uh, you need to get that, and it swings out sideways, and it's really easy to forget to do that. So I'm just going to go back into the 
um, cockpit here and demonstrate how you'd ordinarily do it um, is that you go to uh, the bottom of the tablet button then you've got to click aircraft and I've got it on the right screen there it's actually cr crew and payload but I bet you when you do it one of these other options will come up and you think hang on which one is it is it is it set up is it options I can't remember is it equipment yeah, I can see that, but the, ho the hoist yet is there, it's installed, but it's not there. Under crew and payload, you can see here that actually you can have the um, hoist fitted. It is fitted, obviously, to the HEMS aircraft, but it's stowed here. So then I have to press deploy, okay? And then once it's deployed, it's ready to um, be, uh, be used. So they have to go all the way back, click on map maps and missions, okay? And, and just so you can see outside the aircraft as well. Uh, there you go back to that view you can see that that's um, shifted round, and so we're ready we're in a good position we're ready uh, when we actually need it um, to um, uh, to to have the the hoisting take place and obviously that wouldn't be swung out usually i don't think when you uh, land it usually would be installed here in its carrier so um, i'm interested as a really good practical example of setting up some buttons um, to do that before i take off so let's just move this back uh, to the original, let's go to aircraft, and we'll stow the hoist, and we'll try and attach this to one of our commands. Right, let's just go and switch off and exit out of the sim then. I will not exit out, go to uh, controls options there, and move on to our, we are on our, it's just taken a while to load here. Uh, we don't want the stick, we want to move across, uh, we want the throttle, it's a heli example there. Okay, so let's jump back to the uh, main screen here. And uh, do let me know if the comments section if this is um, helping out. Um, so uh, if I if I look down here, it says hoist arm stow. So and hoist arm deploy. We'll start with deploy. So I'll click on that, and there we are. It's lo it's um, recorded that uh, there's going to be a certain uh, button combination, a button, so a certain signal within Microsoft Flight Simulator that's going to be used for hoist arm de deploy. Now I click on um, that and I find uh, the binding here that I might, I might want to, to use. Now I'm not sure if it will pick out whether I've used a binding uh, before, but some of them I certainly know um, because I've, I've programmed this myself uh, aren't involved. Right, we're going to try a set battery because I know that I've not attached anything to set battery. One, two, three or four. We'll go to set battery one. The, the um, binding for set battery one would be to hoist arm deploy. So let's have a go with that one. I'm sure we can sort this. Okay, so back into the sim then. Okay, I'm going to look at uh, search by name. And I'm going to put battery in. We'll try that. See if that one works, shall we? B A double T. E -R -R, set battery one so uh, what we can do is we can uh, click on set battery one here there you go now I can either manually put the input in here with a whole host of joystick options or if you've forgotten what it is as I have it's nice and easy so we go to start scanning and we click uh, to put the um, to put the uh, hoist out get it ready I'm going to press up the up button there we go so we've Programming joystick button 16, validate that. Okay, so um, that's that one done. Uh, I'll go back to the main sim here. And since um, I'm feeling like, uh, you know, really excited, I'm going to have another one. And I'm going to uh, so add another binding here because I want to do hoist arm, um, hoist arm kind of retract, whatever that, uh, it's hoist arm stow, isn't it? So there we are, this hoist arm stow. Click on that, and um, I noticed before. So the set batteries are all free. Uh, so I'm going to go to set battery two for that. So set battery two be hoist arm stow. Find pull. I'm going to pull down on the rocker switch, and um, and uh, set that to set battery two. So let's uh, do that now. We go across uh, to our flight simulator there. Set battery two. Click on set battery two. Start scanning, pull down on the switch. That's joystick button 16, out of interest. Validate that, there we go. So 17 and 16, so what should happen is that when I press my button up, um, it'll deploy. When I press the button down, it will stow. 
And uh, so let's just stick with that for the moment. The, the next ones that I'll be really interested in is switching to auto, um, auto hoist. Uh, but we won't do that for the moment. This is just uh, set up two examples for us. So we're going to save. Okay. Now it's important. It does say, if you look on a view and modify, it does say key bindings are stored down here in, in a particular folder. You must restart the flight in Microsoft Flight Simulator and say load, up, load the updated key binding. So we need to restart the flight. Okay. So let's then go back to uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, there we are on the right hand side. We're going to apply and save. Important to do that. Going to go back. Going to restart the flight. Click on restart. Do I want to continue? And I'll just uh, make sure that um, uh, you can join me when it's uh, reloaded again. We'll have a look and see if we've managed to make that difference. So we'll just continue on that. See you in a second, folks. It's interesting from the external visuals here that it hasn't actually got a hoist on it, but I think that will change as soon as we jump in the aircraft. So here we are in the aircraft. Uh, can't really see quite what's going on. Can't quite see behind me, uh, but we'll have a quick uh, look at the moment. Now, the first thing I'll do is I'll just jump outside the aircraft, and uh, here we go. So we're outside the aircraft now, and I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so we can see what's happening. Okay, so all I've got is this switch. And I'm going to apply that, and um, hopefully this will open and uh, close for me in one go. So I'm going to press forward. Oh, look at that. Isn't that lovely? I could play with that all day. And there we are. Small things. Uh, please, um, small mice. I should say that the H14, I'm not sure if the um, livery on, I think it's came with the uh, HPG. But I'm just playing away. There we are. There we are. What can you say about that? So we've got our hoist out at the moment. Let's jump back in the aircraft. And of course, I can do that uh, whilst, I'm, for example, I'm looking at missions and working out um, what to do. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if I click on here and if I go into aircraft, if I go into crew and payload, um, if I pull down. So we look at where we are at the moment. I'm just seeing whether we can actually see what's happening in the tablet itself. Sorry, uh, as I, oh, that's not helped. There we are. That will do. So um, let's just have a look. So uh, press up, okay, and press back. Okay, so I pulled down and it's stowed. I've pressed forward and it's deployed. Okay, and I'm not touching at all. So that's um, really good news, isn't it? And then, of course, we can, we don't even need to click on here. So open up my tablet and uh, deploy my thing. Uh, whilst my tablet can be an autopilot or anything, it doesn't really matter. But folks, I just pray that you find that um, helpful. It's a deep, deep, deep kind of consideration of how to um, program the key bindings. As for me, I'm I'm chuffed. That'll that's really good. Okay, so yeah, you've got options there uh, to be able to uh, control uh, the uh, uh, winch as to you know stow it or deploy it. And uh, yeah, what really excites me moving back, and I'm going to do this uh, because I'm so enthusiastic. Uh, I could crush a grape, um, to uh, quote uh, an old British TV children's um, program. Uh, but if I move um, back here into the main sim, I've got the option here of also um, adding a adding a binding, uh, which will allow me uh, to auto uh, host hot hoist or have it in manual mode, uh, which is great. But I can manual up, manual down. So yeah. Um, so there we are. I just uh, hope that's helpful for you. Do let us know in the comment section. Please, please, please do subscribe. It really encourages me to produce content. And uh, and just take care, folks. I hope that for those who wanted it, who are perhaps new to the sim, uh, that's really um, helpful. But I'll just, I'll just, let, I can't resist myself anymore. Just can't. There we are. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, it's a bit, you know. Uh, oh, hello. I'm going to wave goodbye. I'm waving goodbye now. I think that's enough, isn't it? Take care, folks. Stay safe.